Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, October 22nd, 2015. Here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It makes a real big difference for this mother. She's absolutely lying. She told me something entirely different at the casket ceremony. She said it was the cause of the, the, the video and that she would get back to me and tell me what happened with my son. She has not only not gotten back to me, but all I've ever heard is that I am not, not to know because I am not a member of the immediate family. That's next. Enjoy yourself, Hillary. They're gonna burn you, witch, politically. Maybe just throw a bucket of water on you. <laughs> I'll get you with your little dog, too, my pretty. <laughs> And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> After months of calling the Benghazi investigation a witch hunt attempt to destroy her presidential campaign, Hillary Clinton arrived on Capitol Hill today to defend herself before the investigative committee where the evidence continues to pour in, indicating without a doubt that Hillary is guilty of obstructing justice as she has repeatedly done everything in her power to hinder the investigation on Benghazi. Here is her opening statement earlier today on Capitol Hill. I had the honor to lead and the responsibility to support nearly 70,000 diplomats and development experts across the globe. Losing any one of them, as we did in Iraq, Afghanistan, Mexico, Haiti, and Libya during my tenure was deeply painful for our entire State Department and USAID family, and for me personally. I was the one who asked Chris to go to Libya as our envoy. I was the one who recommended him to be our ambassador to the president. After the attacks, I stood next to President Obama as Marines carried his casket and those of the other three Americans off the plane at Andrews Air Force Base. I took responsibility. You go to people's funerals, you killed. And as killed. part of that, before I left office, I launched reforms to better protect our people in the field and help reduce the chance of another tragedy happening. Oh. And look, we've known from the very beginning that she ordered the stand down in Benghazi as a cover for their jihad Muslim extremist takeover of Libya. And I'll never forget the time we had Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer on the show, where, you know, this was shortly after the tragedy, and he said that the attack on the embassy and the death of Ambassador Stevens, to him, it looked like a professional hit job. And who could ever forget when Hillary Clinton first testified before Congress when she had this to say about Benghazi? The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. Well, needless to say, investigators, the majority of the American people, 
and the victims' families who lost loved ones during the attacks on Benghazi, well, they weren't very thrilled with that testimony. Patricia Smith, the mother of one of the four Americans who were killed that day, well, she came right out and said it on national television during an interview on CNN where she called Hillary Clinton a liar. When you heard that, what went through your mind? She's lying. She's absolutely lying. Now we also have some more clips from Hillary Clinton's testimony today, and I think the highlight of the day was the interrogation from Chairman Trey Gowdy, who did a pretty good job, in my opinion, grilling Hillary Clinton on her obstruction of the investigation. And boy, I tell you what, she gave him the death stare the whole time that he was asking her questions. Here's a look at that exchange from earlier today and also a clip from the Alex Jones show earlier today as Alex gives us his take on Hillary's testimony. This committee is the first committee, the only committee, to uncover the fact that Secretary Clinton exclusively used personal email on her own personal server for her official arrogance. business and kept the public record, including emails about Benghazi and Libya, in her own custody and control for almost two years after she left office. Now, when you look at her, that is a true mafia person that's ordered a lot of people killed. And she goes on TV and says, yeah, we came to Libya. We came, we saw he died. Ha, ha, ha. I've been in combat and planes getting shot at, you know, on the ground, all lies. I mean, this is a criminal piece of trash. Oh, look at that. And she just stares like that for minute after minute after minute. I tell you, you got to hand it to uh, Gowdy. I mean, he's going up against the Gorga. Hillary Clinton will testify in front of the Benghazi committee. And of course, she's going to try and spin this as just partisan politics. Another conspiracy well, theory. Uh, let me, let me, <laughs> but let's look at the facts. They lied. One of the first moves the Obama administration made after the Benghazi attack was to contact YouTube in an apparent attempt to blame the attack on an obscure Pastor John video. This is according to State Department documents obtained by Judicial Watch. Later, the administration famously claimed the attack was provoked by another YouTube video. This is not a case of uh, protests directed at the United States uh, writ large or at U.S. policy. This is in response to a video that is offensive. You don't really believe that. Chris, absolutely I believe that because in fact it's the case. While they were plotting an enormous lie on the public, former Navy SEAL David Ubin was still trapped on the roof of the Benghazi Annex for 20 hours. The Obama administration later jailed the filmmaker behind Innocence of Muslims. In fact, he was the only man who's been captured and imprisoned in the aftermath of the Benghazi terrorist attack. What difference at this point does it make? Get your Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirt today at the InfoWars store. Hurry up because these things are selling out faster than Hillary Clinton. Now, I want to switch gears real quick and talk about Barack Obama's catch and release program because it has inspired illegals from all over the world to cross into our borders because the borders, let's face it, they are wide open because it's amnesty for all. A U.S. Customs and Border Protection agent just testified before a Senate committee saying that the Obama administration's policy of catching and releasing detained illegal immigrants is the primary factor that is driving our nation's tsunami of immigrants that are pouring into our country right now. According to this Border Patrol agent, it's because Barack Obama has thrown down the welcome mat. He is ringing the dinner bell and telling the illegal dreamers to come and get it. They know that they will be released and issued a notice to appear. What we have right now is essentially a catch and release policy. This, coupled with the violence and instability in their home country, is what's driving the continued flow into the United States. Unless we hold them until we adjudicate their cases, they will continue to come. Now, this is a really big deal for a lot of these guys who are trying to protect our borders right now. And a lot of these border control agents are, they're simply quitting their jobs because they're getting sick and tired of being told that they have to release these illegal immigrants 
and a lot of these immigrants have criminal backgrounds or are gang members that are simply released, just like that, into our neighborhoods and into our own backyards. I mean, it is absolutely ridiculous, and it's criminal. And our borders are not only wide open to illegal immigrants from all over the world, but we are also in serious danger right now from being infiltrated by terrorist organizations who have no problem walking right into our country. So, so much for Homeland Security. Think actually, we even have a, a lot of out-of-staters, uh, Nebraska, Massachusetts, uh, North Carolina, Oklahoma, many from Florida. Uh, part of our mission is to enforce or help assist Border Patrol and other law enforcement entities out here. We uh, will post out on these heavily trafficked areas and uh, report uh, specific numbers to Border Patrol, specific locations, uh, and they have learned that uh, uh, we're a big help. We're like extra eyes and ears out here. Um, we also, a big part of our mission is awareness, and uh, we do many speaking engagements to uh, let people know exactly what's going on out here and what we're seeing, uh, despite what others say in high political offices that the border is safe, uh, these border towns are safe. It is not. Our ranch gate is 69 miles north of the bridge in Hidalgo that goes into uh, Reynosa, Mexico. A little over a day's walk. Well, actually, most of these people don't walk 69 miles. They all pay a criminal organization, mainly the cartels, uh, big money to be brought up here and let out uh, south of this Border Patrol checkpoint, four and a half miles south of our ranch on U.S. Highway 281. So. They're all contributing to organized crime by paying large sums of money to be brought in here. And to give you an example, uh, the Chinese are paying 50000 the Indians are paying ten to 20000 all the Central Americans, the average is about 7000 So, and the Mexicans, uh, uh, especially Southern Mexico, are paying 3000 So, it's a huge, huge uh, money event for the cartels, uh, probably even more lucrative than the drug business. What percentage? are you seeing uh, from places other than South and Central America? The Border Patrol and Homeland Security categorize the people that are not from Mexico as other than Mexicans. And uh, prior to last night, uh, they were it was running about 73% of the people apprehended in the Rio Grande Valley are OTMs other than Mexican. A um, lot of Central Americans, but really from all over the, the world. And uh, we were informed last night that that number has escalated to 80 percent. So, uh, and this is this is a fact. So most of the people that we encounter here, a uh, larger percentage of them are people from other other countries other than Mexico. And we're not told about the special interest aliens. Uh, we have had Somalians here once they got on that special. Uh, uh, alien list, uh, they won't tell us that anymore, but there have been S Somalians, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Chinese, uh, you name it, we've had it here. <laughs> we've also uh, uh, found evidence that people from these uh, special interest countries, in particular Pakistan and Afghanistan, Iran, um, uh, are coming through our property. Uh, during one of our Texas border volunteer operations last year, uh, we had a group of 10. Uh, we spotted, uh, we followed them, uh, informed the Border Patrol where they were going to come out on the highway. Border Patrol were not able to respond fast enough. They got, they climbed the fence and uh, uh, loaded up and, and left and uh, were, were not caught. But as one of them was uh, climbing over the fence, he dropped uh, a package. And that package uh, was an Urdu dictionary. Urdu is a language uh, spoken in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And in that uh, uh, translation book, Urdu and English, there were a lot of phrases circled and outlined. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? You must pay in 